And our next guest, uh, Mario Casabona, somebody that uh, Elizabeth and I have known for a long time. He's really a very important person in the New Jersey entrepreneurial scene. Uh, he's run a successful business and then he turned into uh, an investor and he's really a mentor to a lot of startup uh, companies in New Jersey. A great person though, always willing to help out and he has a little money too, which makes him really popular. So welcome to the show. Uh, Mario, so good to have you here. Uh, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. And I've, I've got to start off with the point that I'm actually an immigrant. And um, uh, parents and I immigrated and uh, we had a, a voyage. Uh, I would say passage to New York. <laughs> and, and, uh, That's a good one. What, what a phenomenal experience. And then lived in Brooklyn for about five or six years and uh, got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> and my parents decided to move us to Bloomfield, New Jersey. Oh. And, and there I spent, I've spent most of my life in New Jersey. So that's why I'm pretty entrenched in the science and technology community. Uh, but, um, uh, uh, you know, went to high school and obviously, and then went to uh, college at Fairleigh Dickinson. And I've always wanted to be an engineer. Um, so I started my career working at a company called uh, ITT. Uh, where I was a design engineer, and in those days, we didn't have mentors. What we had was what we called bosses and supervisors <laughs> and, and difficult people to work for, uh, but they were really mentors, and I had three wonderful mentors. Uh, they even wrote some major books, and I was probably the only junior engineer working for them, and they, they were really uh, difficult on me. Uh, but went from uh, ITT, then with a spin-off company called Curis and Alterman. Uh, they got bought by Raytheon, and then I didn't get along with the Raytheon management. Uh, spun off a company called Electro Radiation Incorporated with basically two weeks worth of vacation money. So, so that's wow. your own company? That was my own company, yep, 100%. Um, and it was uh, two, two weeks vacation. Uh, but I had sort of name recognition in the industry, so it was relatively easy to get uh, contracts, okay? And it was really, it was with the Department of Defense, um, and it was just, it was wonderful. I had a great time, and uh, so that, so what I basically did is I bootstrapped the company. So there's a difference between uh, investor, where you, where you uh, uh, raise capital, versus where you bootstrap. Uh, and bootstrap, you have to worry about cash flow and, and, and a lot of, a lot of uh, financial situations. But I thought I was a great engineer. Um, and then uh, while I was working at, this, at, at Raytheon, my supervisor came up to me and said, Mario, we need to talk. And, and the reality is he uh, brought me in and he says, Mario, you're really not a good engineer. You're, oh, how nice. Yeah, oh, oh, he blew me away. He was just... Wow. devastated me and I thought it was a great engineer and um, uh, he um, uh, basically told me he says you're a better manager than I am oh, so within well, six months hmm. within six months he became my uh, he ended up working for me uh, I helped him launch a, a company while I was still working there and then he helped me launch a company called Electro Radiation Incorporated uh, we did some great work for Department of Army, Navy, Air Force, Turkish government, Israeli government. So we were somewhat global, um, and, um, uh, but we still we were providing services. So we really didn't have a product. And probably uh, back in the late 90s, I decided to create a lot of intellectual property, uh, which really gave me a opportunity because now I had other values. So I owned the IP. Um, at, at the end of the day, we had uh, six um, uh, US patents and six international patents. And I went through the whole PCT the whole, process. You the know, whole you, shebang, you, right? You guys in, um, know yeah, it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You guys absolutely know it. And um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we, uh, we really filled the gap in the industry. Honeywell, uh, so I actually hired a uh, investment banker and the uh, interesting part is that I could not speak, as, as, as much as I knew the uh, uh, C-suite technology folks, I couldn't speak their language. 
Hmm. So I hired an investment banker, and the investment banker basically said, Mario, this is the way we're going to do things. Now, I've been a CEO for 20 years, hmm. and now I've got this individual telling me, you're going to do it my way. Wow. And I said, okay. <laughs> well, that's hard to do. Oh, so, well, if, so, if they know something you don't, then I, well, well, that's it. They, what they, else they, are you going to do? They spoke you know? a different language, and um, uh, they were able to get three offers. And Honeywell uh, came up with a fantastic offer, and a lot of it had to do with the in intellectual property uh, that we had. It's and always we, good to hear. We try telling people we that. We try. <laughs> if you want to sell your company to Honeywell, have yeah, intellectual yeah. property. Yeah. So it's it's something that's very tangible, and it, it really differentiates yourself from, from everybody else. So then worked for Honeywell for three years, had a great time. I didn't have to worry about uh, payroll. Uh, payroll came from Honeywell Heaven. <laughs> right? The money just falls it out just, of the sky. Came so down. How so nice to run a business yeah. and not have to worry about so, payroll. So, so when Honeywell bought your company, they bought you with it for three years? Is that no, kind of what so, so that was interesting. So um, uh, maybe I was a little bit uh, arrogant, independent, but I heard some horror stories when large companies buy small, medium-sized companies. So my reaction was to them was, okay, you really want to buy us, but I don't know how you're going to treat me. So, um, I want, number one, I had uh, all my employees got hired, even my part-time employees, because the, the reality is I'm, I, you can't be a one-man show. You've got to have a team behind you, people that you trust. I had a wonderful C-suite. I had a wonderful team, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be in the position I was. So, uh, I sold the company with the understanding that they would all be hired, okay? And then uh, I didn't want to have a, an obligation to be with Honeywell because if it didn't go well, I'd say, I, I want to walk away. I, I just So we actually worked out a three-year uh, retention bonus, um, and I loved it. It was, it was uh, fantastic. Uh, Honeywell was great. Um, the um, culture at Honeywell fit right into the same culture that my company had. Uh, transition was relatively easy. Uh, and I give that credit to my uh, to the vice president at Honeywell uh, that I ended up reporting to. Hmm. Um, so uh, and then and then I was with Honeywell for three years. Uh, left it basically just bu too bureaucratic. My products were starting to go into manufacturing. So what I decided to do was to uh, figure out what do I want to do the rest of my life. Um, and with you know. The age that I was, and and uh, how many times can I start a company? Uh, turns out maybe two or three companies, and I said, nah, 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 I want to do more than that. So I decided to become an angel investor. So that's where I decided to give my money away. <laughs> well, the whole thing returns What's sometimes. That? So, so, so that's my philanthropic. <laughs> okay. that's but where's my the investor part of that? <laughs> so, so uh, it, it does. Re investing does work. You got to do it smartly. Wow. Yes. So, how do you pick your companies? Um, that, now, now that's a, a a really tough question, primarily um, because um, the number one important aspect of investing in a company is is really investing in the team mm -hmm. okay so you know there's some some companies that come in some ideas that come in that barely have a team put together so then the question is can that CEO can that leader pull together a team okay and that's a hard thing to do so I prefer investing in a two to three man two to three person team than a one-person team. Um, and then the next question comes up is, do the three, four, does the team, have they worked together in the past? Do they know each other? So does that happen a lot where people have, they come to you, they present their their business and you know they, they everybody has these slide decks and sort of like in the first five slides they have pictures of all the people who are team members or who are affiliated they have their bios and you look at that and but there's more to a team right than just putting pictures on a slide deck right and it does it does it really work out that they, people have worked together a lot in the past so my my initial reaction is going to be no okay um, but 
uh, what what happens is, uh, I mean, I've run into companies where it's it's one solid CEO. He's got energy. Um, I'm not sure it's more energy than Walter had. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be we're, hard. But, we were all but, but, perspiring during Walter's yeah. segment, by the way. We weren't even working out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. Um, but it takes that kind of energy and passion uh, and confidence from that individual. But he can't do everything himself. Okay, Maybe initially he can for the first three, more, three, four months, especially when he's trying to raise some friends and family capital. But then after that, he's got to have a team. So if he's just going to go out and go to a meetup and, and identify a team member, and meetups are great places to meet people, but if you go out to a, a, a meetup and, and identify an individual, you, you really don't know the chemistry, the culture between those two people, those two individuals. So I look for, for individuals that have worked together in the past, that have failed together in the past. Okay. Wow, that's a that's kind of a twist. Why 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 fail? I mean, that's counterintuitive. Well, no, no, no. Well, you you learn from your failures. Right. 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 I mean, you, you you build a company, and and the intent is not to fail. You, you don't want to do that to your investors. Okay. But in reality, you know, one out of ten companies might make it. So where does the other nine go? Well, they're failures. Right. And and but don't look at it as being failed, as failures. They're they're really have learned what the process is and what mistakes not to make in, in the next venture. So if, when we spoke on the phone earlier, I mean, we've known you for years, but you and I talked a little bit about what we were going to say here. I asked you to define the difference between an angel investor and a VC, venture capital investor. Sure, sure. So let, let's, let's take it a little bit before that. Okay, so uh, uh, an entrepreneur says, well, I've got this great idea, I want to put it together. He puts together a, a business plan. And by the way, we usually want a pitch deck, not really a, a business plan at this point. Um, so you, you go out and you start contacting your friends, your family, people that love you, people that believe in you. And that's called a family and friend uh, raise. Okay, so you raise twenty five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. It it may give you some opportunities to build a minimum viable product or or maybe wireframes if you're doing an app. It, it'll help you do something. But at the end of the day, you need additional capital. Well, if if you go to VCs, you're much too early for those VCs because the the um, uh, what the VCs need to do is they're they're basically managing other people's money. So they've got certain criteria, certain uh, uh, requirements they have to fulfill. So what's in between friends and family and venture capitalists are angel investors. Okay, and that's that's where we come in. Um, and usually angel investors are individuals that that like myself who have been successful entrepreneurs, had an exit or two, um, and now they they uh, have some capital, discretionary funds that they want to put back to work, but in reality what they're doing is they're giving back. Because we do have expectations of an ROI, but in reality, one out of 10 usually makes it. So do you mentor your companies? Yeah, yeah, so um, it's, it's interesting. So uh, uh, as an angel investor, um, de depending if we are gonna be more active in the company, so then we provide guidance advisory, okay? But typically an angel investor does not mentor a company. And there's always exceptions to that rule, okay? Typically uh, we'll, we'll uh, invest in a company and we're, we're, we're somewhat passive. Uh, we'll get on their board of directors, maybe a board of uh, um, um, observer. Uh, we'll provide some guidance, we'll give some contacts, uh, but we're not really, mentoring okay so because of that all right and and because of the deal flow because I always want to look at deals ahead of time before anybody else sees it I want to get a jump on the deals so because of that we actually created an entity called tech launch okay um, and initially tech launch was was meant to take companies with ideas provide them with some seed capital and and take an equity position and put them through a 16-week rigorous boot camp. 
Okay. What I mean by rigorous is that we uh, we expected some of our founders to sleep over the weekend at, at the co-working space. Um, so we, we did that uh, for about three years. We had three programs. We launched 26 companies um, and we invested about 1.6 million. I raised a fund of about 1.6 million. Um, and then what I realized, and this is probably 2015, I realized that, especially in New Jersey, because I've been New Jersey focused, that um, uh, the quality of the deal flow just wasn't there. I was not excited about the deal flow. And during about that time, IoT was coming into play. So when you talk about deal flow, you mean like the number of projects that you were seeing and the quality of the projects that you were seeing? Is that kind of what you mean by deal flow? So, so the number of opportunities or deals um, uh, I'll, I'll say there's plenty of great ideas out there, all right? So the, the issue is not the quantity of deals or opportunities. The, the issue was the quality of the deal. And what I mean by that is, do they have a team? Do they have some revenue? Um, how long have they been in existence, right? What's their traction? Uh, what's their, what problem are they solving? Okay, so that's that's really the, the, the type of questions I would ask. So if somebody has an idea, they've started a business, they want to find angel funding, they come to you, what do they how should they prepare themselves? What should they what should they have in their bag of in, on their slide deck sure. to uh, impress you enough to make you want to invest? So the, the first hurdle is really how do they get to someone like me? Right, that's, that's really the first hurdle. Um, and and the, the best way to do that, I mean, obviously you can apply to various platforms. Uh, Gust is one of them, Proceeder is another. Um, I can't think of, of some others, uh, but that's one way to do it. But then you get into the hopper. So the, the real way to, to get my attention is to go through individuals like yourself. Gerhardt Law calls me up. Richard calls me and says, Mario, you know, I've been looking at this company they, they, I, I don't know what else they need, but we do look at them. It's called a warm introduction, mm -hmm. right? And I, I get that with you know some other law, other law firms, Gibbons Law, um, uh, others, and accounting firms, right? So it's so the warm intro introduction puts them to the top, okay? Then I start when I when I look at it, I I want to look at a, an executive summary, one page executive summary, that probably gives me a snapshot of what I want to look at. That'll get me, that, that'll get my interest. If I'm not interested, it's a real quick email that says, thank you very much, uh, but I'm not interested in this opportunity. If I'm interested, then we start the communication process and I look for a pitch deck, all right? And usually that pitch deck is about 15 to 18 pages, okay? And really what I look for is, you know, what's your journey to get there, to where you are? That's number one, because everybody has a story. And, and, and the reason you're, you're most likely raising capital is because you had some kind of uh, event that happened in your life that you want to solve that problem, okay? So what's your journey? Uh, what's the problem? And what's the solution to your problem? That's what I want to hear. And what, um, how, how are you going to solve it? What, what technology is going to be required? Uh, who's on your team? All right. Can you execute? What's your competition? What are the intellect? You know, what, what are the hurdles from someone else coming in? Can you get intellectual property? <laughs> yes, yes, and that's how you get to it. What things are you interested in? Like, is it normally like? something that you can relate to or is it something that is like unrelatable but like what are the things that you'll say oh my god this is different or this is something that i'm prone to invest in sure like what would get your attention sure so um yeah you know, my background is engineering right electronics so i'm interested in tech so when when apps were really flourishing and they still are but when they were fl flourishing in the in the 2000 and 10, 12, 13, um, I really had no other choice but to go along with, with, with the industry, with the market. And even prior to that, I invested in uh, clean tech. Mm -hmm. I invested in an entire, entire recycling company, uh, which didn't go anywhere. Uh, and then it was the apps, 
Okay, and, and then, uh, you know, the, the whole thing of VR, artificial intelligence. Um, so now what I basically invest in is IoT, the Internet of Things, which is a combination of sensors, a computer, and the cloud, algorithms, AI, and, and uh, augmented reality, so the, the whole thing, uh, and also medical technology. So, in, in, for instance, in your case, right, where it's, it's, it's more athletic mm -hmm. type, if you wanted to raise capital, you probably would not come to an angel investor like myself. Mm -hmm. And, and that, then it's up to you to figure out which angel is in your industry. So you'll get the best opportunity, best reaction, and higher valuation, okay, if you, if you approach an angel investor that's familiar with your industry, that has, that's been there, that has the same passion as you do. And when it comes to building your team, mm. um, what team, team members do you know you need off back? Like as soon as like in building my team, like I, like my friends just came together and was like, okay, I'll do this for you. I'll, I'll do this for you. I'm like, okay, but what is your role? And like now we don't even know we anyone's role, but we have a team of people all working together, but no one has titles. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to throw around some titles, mm -hmm. uh, titles, which as a startup, don't mean that much, right. but it but it sort of qualifies the the what's expected of that individual. So you, you need a CEO, the, the the guy that's going to be the bottle washer. He's going to clean the toilets, that too, <laughs> and 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 wash dishes if you have to. So you start out with the CEO, and then as as you get traction and you raise some capital, then you end up hiring a CTO. Or, or maybe it's a technology that comes out of a university, and that's a, t a CTO. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, so for, but for Walter's case, it might be like a video production person, yes, right. or somebody so who's familiar marketing. with right. streaming technologies, right? right? right. So, so it, it depends on the business. You, you need to hire different, you, you need to bring on different talents. Now as a startup, you say, well, I have no money. I haven't raised any capital yet. What do I do? Well. Um, you become, you, you end up uh, bringing on board people that you've known, you've trusted, you've worked with, with the understanding that when you do raise capital, you'll start paying them. Right. Well, a lot of that stuff ends up being volunteer. How a lot of them have a first job, too. How do you get over the anxiety of asking for money? Because um, I've, I've done wow. a lot of wellness events. That's a I've, pretty open question. Right. I don't think anybody has ever asked that <laughs> but here to, before. But, but to that's ask, a great question. you know, to really ask for money or to ask for investors, like I'm surrounded by tons of people, and I've even had people say, "Hey, you know, as soon as you're ready, let me know." And I'm like, uh, "Okay," but I've been I've been financing everything myself out of pocket. Every event I've ever had, I pay for every single thing. So I'm trying to actually not be in that position, and I have people around me that are willing, but there's just this anxiety of saying, hey, I need a million dollars. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it's a great point because what, what you have to decide early on is, do you want to bootstrap your company? What I mean by that is you don't want to bring in any money. Right. Right. You just generate revenue. You work a little bit harder. Um, and, and or you say, well, look, I have this great idea and I think I can make money from my investors and yourself, obviously. So then what you do is you, you've got to look at look for investors. Now, the, the difference between the two is that if you're bootstrapping a company, you're really, you're the owner, you're making all the decisions. There's nobody lighting the fire under you. So, for instance, in myself, my company, it took me 23 years to sell the company, okay? And I did, I did very well, okay? Now, if you, if you want to grow faster and you want to be able to exit the company, then the best thing to do is to go out and find investors. Okay, now, uh, the hang up of, of finding investors. The reality is that we're human beings as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so networking, going to various uh, the, the opportunities that you can meet other investors, show your passion, okay, uh, and I think you'll do great. Do you think, too, though, that they kind of want to list of what you're going to spend the money on? Last question, then we have to wrap this so, up. So, use of funds. 
Yeah, that's, so, that's, that's so maybe really, if you had that, you'd feel more comfortable. Right. Yeah. Right. Like you could say, "Give me fifty thousand to make a commercial." Or, right. It's going towards this, this, or that. It makes sense. Well, if you if you're really going to approach an investor, and that's going to be your objective, you you really need to put together some kind of a pitch deck that says, "This is this is my idea, and this is how I'm going to execute on my idea." All right. And obviously, if you're going to ask for five hundred a million, whatever it is. You have to let them know how you're going to spend this money. Okay, now uh, you, you can put together four bullets, five bullets, and say, I'm going to spend 20% on development, 30% on sales and marketing, 50% on hiring new people. It's all well and good. What's your backup? Because angels and investors will look right through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. And unfortunately, we're coming to the end of the segment right now. Uh, Mario, just absolutely fantastic advice. How can our listeners find you if they want to follow up? Sure. So if you if you want to get some uh, mentoring and exposure to investors, then my suggestion is go to techlaunch.com, T-E-C-H-L-A-U-N-C-H.com. Um, if you want to know more about uh, what type of investing I do, then just go to Casabona Ventures. Dot com, all one word. If you want to follow Tech Launch, it's uh, uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, Tech Launch NJ. Right, and Gerhardt Law is a sponsor of Tech yes, Launch. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. So Bull if you pen. go, you get, yep. and you win, you yes. get free legal services, free patent yep. services from yep. us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's it, even if you don't have a project, if you're thinking about doing one, I suggest go to Tech Launch because you can learn so much about how the entrepreneurial process works, how entrepreneurs present, the types of things they present. It's a, it's a wonderful education for anybody who is interested in entrepreneurism. So, uh, so great, I hope you'll stay with us for the pitches. They're mm -hmm. coming up right next, uh, right now next, and we'll be back right after this commercial message. <laughs> 